Hello, Elaine. Welcome to the Soul Aligned Self-Care Podcast. I am so excited to have you as a guest today. How are you doing? Amazing. Thank you so much for having me here today. If we could get started just by sharing with the audience a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yes. Well, I have been a master life coach for the last decade, and I help women get quiet and create stillness in their life so they can actually tune in to their soul's voice. So I've been doing this for hundreds and hundreds of women. And uh, well, I had to do it for myself first. So Mm -hmm. that is what I do. I love that. I love that. Can you tell me a little bit about how you transitioned into doing that work and what you transitioned from? Yes. Well, I had been a uh, dental hygienist for over 20 years. Um, My life class, I call it, because I sat with over 40,000 patients one-on-one. That's That's crazy. Stadium full of humanity. Yes. (laughs) And in that life class, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about people. I learned what made people happy. And I also, what made people sick, anxious, depressed, stressed, and burned out. And so I, I got a lot of fascinating insights those years, um, particularly about what creates health in our bodies. And, you know, based upon all of those patients and now all of my coaching clients, I have come up with the solution for a lot of people, including myself first, on how to live the best life we possibly can. That's beautiful. I love that. Tell me, did that, was this something, um, as you were going through it yourself, was this something that was a, a gradual process of like trying different modalities to help you and like, like what I call throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. And did you reach a moment where you were like, aha, like there was that moment where you were like, okay, like this is it, like this really helped me. Well, I love that image of throwing spaghetti because I, I did a lot of personal development. Yes. Uh, So much so that, um, in all of that, I was able to distill down my own healing energy energy medicine modality. So I I did everything from personal development, reading books, going to, going to conferences, um, acupuncture, massage therapy, uh, Reiki. Um, I even did a certain unique type of um, energy work in the um, mountains of of central Mexico with a shaman. I mean, I was searching for the answers to my overwhelm, to why I was um, now newly diagnosed in my early thirties with autoimmune disease, why my marriage had fallen apart. And now all of a sudden I became a full-time working single mother. So there was a lot to unravel within myself. And yes, I did a lot for over 15 years until I finally discovered, uh, a labyrinth. If you've ever walked a labyrinth before, mm-hmm. that is the very first time I actually got quiet enough to hear the answers for me. Instead of listening to the world, I was able finally to walk that labyrinth, which is really a 4,000 year old contemplative meditative tool where I was able to walk to the center and walk out and actually hear my own soul's voice guiding me directing me to where I was supposed to go in this lifetime. I love that. Um, Can you go deeper into what you mean by labyrinth? Is it like more like the metaphor of uh, a journey? Yes. So um, you walk a labyrinth. They're all over the world. If you go to (laughs) labyrinthlocator.com, you can find one. They're usually at churches or hospitals. A lot of people even have them on their private, um, in their private homes and backyards and things. And so I found this retreat center, started walking this labyrinth, which is not a a maze to confuse you, but it's it's circular paths. Mm -hmm. There's only one way in and one way out. And so I started walking this, these paths. And it's like the way that my body was swaying through these paths energetically allowed my body and my mind and my heart to settle. And it's in this settled, relaxed state that I needed so desperately 
because my world had gotten so chaotic and so loud. Mm -hmm. I was so desperate to just find what was missing in my life. And what I have found through all of these patients and clients now over two decades is that we wonder what we're missing. And what we're really missing is ourselves. I love that. Um, I think that even before we even get deeper into this, uh, to acknowledge how many people, women, I feel like, I feel like, I'm not sure if I'm correct about this, but I feel like women suffer from this a little bit more than men, but how many people are in that stuck in that cycle of the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing, I feel like women are almost bred from the time of birth to be serving others and taking care of other people. And we're told that this is the way, you know, this is how we become worthy of recognition and love is to take care of others and put everybody else first before ourselves. And one of the things that I, I find myself constantly saying to some of my clients is that when you take care of yourself, when you learn to put yourself first, that then you get to put that version, that rested version, that non-stressed out, that relaxed version, that happy version of yourself back into the world. And then the whole world benefits from that, including, you know, your children and your family and, you know, your partner, your business, your, uh, you know, or, or your job, whatever it might be, everybody that your life touches benefits from you putting yourself first. And so I feel like the, uh, the fact that you're doing this work, kind of acknowledges the fact that there are so many people that are struggling with stress and overwhelm and burnout. And I feel like um, making some kind of a transition where we could show people that, that we don't need to live that way. And I feel like that's what you're doing. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. You know, really what I'm teaching is this concept of letting go of non-attachment and that less is more. And what is that less? That less is clarity. When we get tuned in to our soul's calling and that voice that really is there to guide us, we get so, <clears throat> excuse me, we get so clear about the direction of where we're going. So there's no more throwing spaghetti on the walls and seeing what <laughs> sticks. We have a clear direction and that's what happened to me and that's what happens to my clients when they come to these retreats. Um, they get so clear and so efficient that there's no more running around in circles. And this is what is so magical to see. And for me, I'm really also teaching how to let go of everything that we hold. As mm -hmm. women, we are hold it alls. We hold everything. Mm -hmm. And think about the dense, stuck heaviness that we walk around with in all aspects of our life. And this is what Get Quiet, the book, is really about. Mm -hmm. How do we let go of all of these things and various aspects of our lives that we're holding onto that are weighing us down? Yeah, I can't. I I read the first chapter as I shared with you, and I cannot wait to read the rest of the book. I feel like this is something that even I myself need because I'm always uh, looking for to share more of these different healing modalities and different ways to like regulate your nervous system with the people, the listeners, and also with my own clients. And so I'm always on this constant like search, like you said. And when you were talking about the lab, the labyrinth, um, I've never done that. So now I'm like, it's on my list. It's going to be on my list. And one of the first things I thought of when you said my body was leaning towards a certain way, one of the first things I thought was your, your body is in the moment, like going through the labyrinth. And at the same time, it causes a I felt like it would cause enough of a, almost like a distraction to allow your mind to release. Is that part of how it works or is it just something different than that? Well, that's one of the paths is this quieting of the mind, because mm -hmm. when we are doing, 
it's sort of like a walkitation, you know, like a walking yeah. meditation. I like that. And so when you do walk these circular paths, everything settles. And yes, the mind settles in a way that um, allows, like I said, allows this um, universal, beautiful energy, call it God, intuition, your higher self, your soul. It is so clear. The very first time, in fact, I ever walked a labyrinth. And I was desperate because I was a single mom uh, living paycheck to paycheck. I was living in complete uncertainty in my life mm -hmm. and I was desperate for answers. And the very first time I got quiet in this space and still I heard the one message that really, really started it all. And the message I heard clearly as if somebody was literally right next to me speaking in a very loving voice was surrender. I was holding so much at the time. Mm -hmm. I had to surrender. I had to surrender to the uncertainty of not knowing what was going to happen in my life. Was I going to find love again? Was I going to be fulfilled in a, in a job again? Because I loved being a dental hygienist years ago, but I knew there was something more for me. You know, mm -hmm. were my kids going to be okay through divorce or was I going to mess up their lives? I mean, there was so much uncertainty, mm -hmm. but I first had to let go and surrender of the outcome of all of that. And that's a muscle we build and it's not easy, but if you can just start with one little simple thing today to surrender and trust that the universe and God is supporting you and loves you and wants the best for you, your life will completely change. Okay. I, I love that. I think I need this. I think I need to do whatever I'm going to read in this book uh, and, and get quiet uh, because it is very hard for me to get quiet. And it's, it's almost like uh, a little bit of work for me to sit still at some times. And so I kind of figured out in my own life, what are the best times for me to sit still and, and meditate, you know, and that would, most of the time I try to meditate right after I do yoga, which I do almost every day. And I can actually really sit still and like actually get quiet. But when I just try to wake up in the morning and do a meditation, there is so much going on. It's like, da, 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 and like, I'm just pulled out of it and I'm constantly like, okay, focus on your breath. And it's like, oh, but you have an interview today and, oh, you have to do this today. Oh, and you have to call that person. Don't forget to call that person. And so um, I'm sure you could appreciate that, that that's, yeah, I could definitely use some getting quiet in my life, but I have to ask you about the surrender part because I've heard this so often and I feel like I don't know how to do this myself. And so, and you said, get started small little steps, which is exactly what I always tell my clients is take baby steps, baby steps, create big change in your life. And I'm like, okay, what would you say is a good way to learn how to do that surrendering? Well, in, in get quiet, I do want to be clear that it really is not about sitting cross-legged in meditation. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different type of stillness. It's more of an active stillness. It's okay. an active quiet. And so every path that I talk about, because the book is called Get Quiet, Seven Simple Paths to the Truth of Who You Are. Mm -hmm. So every path is a metaphor around this labyrinth. Okay. And so the first path and the way that I would say, how do you, to answer your question, how do we surrender? Well, the first question you ask yourself, because it's the first path is, the first path is nurturing your body. Mm -hmm. So what can we let go of? What can we heal? What can we surrender the outcome to? What can we do to focus on nurturing our body that allows us to feel lighter and not so heavy? Is it the way we self-talk? Is it that we've been looking away at something in our bodies that needs to be addressed? And so all these things that we're holding heavy with on our bodies will allow us to get lighter and help us ease more easily surrender to the to the bigger things mm -hmm. 
So how can we surrender? So my, so the question that you ask yourself is what can I surrender that will cause my life to become lighter? Because the whole purpose is to be able to access the lightness of being of who we are. And that's in the space and a state where you can actually then connect to your soul. But mm -hmm. we have, we are so weighed heavy down with, being in control of everything. I mean, I was wanting to be in control of everything in my life. Yeah. When I heard the message surrender, I was like, well, are you kidding me? Like my whole life's going to fall apart if I surrender. <laughs> That's exactly uh, the mindset I had right when you said that. I was like, oh, I've heard this before. Like I, I obviously, this keeps coming into my life. I feel like the people that come into our life come into our life for a reason. And so this surrender keeps coming into mind. So I feel like, yeah, there's something there. Now, the second path that I talk about is cleaning and clearing your environment. What is weighing heavy in our environment? Mm -hmm. Is it that our closets are full of old clothes? Our drawers are stuffed with papers that we haven't gone through in years. Our outside storage units that we've paying for every month, we've thrown away the key. We don't even know where it is. Yes. All of this is stuck energy. We, this is what I, uh, what I, when I get into energy medicine, this is all the dense stuck energy that was, that's weighing heavy on us mm -hmm. so that that's why we feel so stuck and so burnt out and so stressed is because we're just, we've accumulated so much by the time we hit midlife that it's weighing us down. So this is yeah. all about cleaning and clearing out what's weighing heavy on us. Oh, that's actually one of my favorite things to do. I could, I could say that I'm pretty good at that. I call it decluttering and I call it removing all the friction from your life. And yeah, you can go, I love going really deep into that because even though there's like physical clutter, there's also a lot of clutter that isn't physical, like your email list or your social media or the media that you consume or even even things like um, gifts that past ex-boyfriends gave you just hanging out there in the corner that you could just like get rid of that energy, throw that out the window. And it's like, woo, God, that felt good. You know? Yes. So I, I love doing that. I, I've, I'm so down with that decluttering and re reducing friction in your life. It just creates all that open space so that you could add in all the good things. That's right. That's right. Or just keep it open space. Okay. Yeah. True. Open space. That's very. Because in order for us to grow, we need space mm -hmm. because that's what space needs. We can't be confined and constricted mm -hmm. with all of this stuff around us, almost suffocating us. We mm -hmm. need, we need space. So if you're going to uh, bring things to the, um, to the, uh, to the donation centers, um, maybe think about not even bringing anything back in to replace mm -hmm. it, just creating more and more space for you to grow. And this is how we can live our second half of life much different than the first half of life. The second mm -hmm. half of life, we're going to be living on our terms. Now we've taken care of everybody. We've, we've helped everyone live out their dreams and now mm -hmm. it's our time. Yes. Hell yeah, Sam. <laughs> I, I am so down with that. Yes. And yeah, the, uh, that's why it feels so good to do those things. That's why it feels so good to empty out a closet and bring the stuff to Goodwill. And, it, you know, that's why it's so people love doing it so much. You know, sometimes it feels overwhelming to start a project, but I always encourage people to do little projects of decluttering, you know, like even if you're just cleaning out your purse or your wallet or the center console in your car, it feels good to get rid of, you know, to create that space. That's right. And the clients that I do this with, there's just mm -hmm. a lot of cleaning and clearing. There could be limitations, limiting beliefs, patterns and behaviors that are on repeat that not, are no longer serving us. So there's a lot that we carry and hold that we can dismantle. And I have seen clients, my one in particular, which I, oh, I love her so much. She was in a job that she loved, but she knew it wasn't for her. She was in corporate America and mm -hmm. been there for over 12 years, but she knew there was something more. 
Well, we went out to the labyrinth and she clearly heard the message that she should start a travel agency business. It just came out of nowhere. She had always loved to travel, but she never thought she'd actually have a business around that, but she loved it so much. And the message was so clear that she actually took it to heart. And now 18 months later, she has a thriving travel agency career. How cool and she, is that? She's, she's from Indian descent and she literally trip has organized tens and tens of, of trips to India because that's very hard for Americans to navigate because you need vaccinations and it's a large country and what would they be interested in? So it's just fascinating how she found her niche. She found mm -hmm. her purpose. And really it's our second half of life. That is when we find our purpose, but we have to get quiet enough in the aspects that I write about and get quiet so we can hear that soul's calling very clear because we're not going to hear those souls, souls calling, scrolling social media, watching the news, you know, being around people in our lives that are not supportive and loving. It has to get healthy. We've got to get back to our natural state of health and wellness in mm -hmm. order to bring in those new ideas and dreams for ourselves again. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Earlier you talked about, you said, um, energy, uh, energy, uh, healing modalities that you used for yourself. What did you mean by that? I was curious. Well, as, as, as my client heard the message of being a travel agent for, uh -huh. for Indian to for India travel, I heard very clearly that I was going to bring in a new modality for energy medicine healing. And so my life had become so quiet. I mean, I had disconnected from people, social media, the news, all of these things that were weighing me down. I literally disconnected from everything. I cleaned and cleared out everything in my life. And for almost three years, I'd gotten so quiet mind, body, and soul, that I was able to actually connect to what I know is the quantum field, a mm -hmm. field of energy that has infinite intelligence. That is That energy is trying to find each one of us to bring into this world your purpose. And every great innovator, every great person who's ever done anything magnificent has connected to this field. Mm -hmm. it. No, and it's so, true. You hear it all the time. Yes. And so I was able to bring in eight energy points in the body that actually done in the order that you're, that I prescribe is a very cellular healing. It's a body scan for each and every one of us, especially for women who are very intuitive to and in touch to our bodies. And if we aren't in touch with our bodies, this is a perfect way to get back in touch with our bodies, especially as we get older too, and we're going through perimenopause and menopause, mm -hmm. our bodies are shifting and changing so much. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a reconnection to how our bodies are feeling and we can actually heal ourselves. So this is about self-healing. And uh, so I talk about uh, these energy points and get quiet as well. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I would love to hear more about that. I did a course. I'm trying to remember the name of the woman I took the course from in energy healing. And I found it to be really interesting because I was doing that at the same time I was getting certified in yoga. And then I was also trying out Qigong. And what I noticed was all of the mo movements and all three of those things are, are very similar and are doing, cause like I would do something that in, in yoga and I'd be like, Oh, that was one of the movements in the energy healing course. And then I'm, and then I'm doing Qigong and I'm like, Oh, that's interesting because that's a, something I do in yoga all the time, you know? And I find it very interesting how it's all connected. And I'm very excited to very excited to read your book now. Like I'm very excited. Yes. And while you're doing all those uh, beautiful, beautiful modalities, I love all of those. What you are doing and what feels so good 
is that you're shifting energy. You're shifting stuck energy. Mm -hmm. And this is how we grow. This is how we heal. This is how we connect to, like I said, our soul's voice. We have to be so light in our energy, not weighed down heavy, not that hold it all mm -hmm. person in order to get so light that you can actually live heaven on earth. Yeah. This is the state in which you can live today. And this is what I talk about and get quiet. And I feel like this is a, a, a very, the perfect time for something like this to come out. I feel like there's so many people who need this right now. Uh, I would like to ask you about your retreat. Is it a retreat center? Am I correct when I say that? It's, I, I don't personally own the retreat, but I have mm -hmm. retreats there. Okay. And it's where I do all my labyrinth work. So labyrinths are based off of the Christian uh, traditions, but I have made it my own. And mm -hmm. so, and a lot of people make labyrinth walking their own. So whether you have access to a labyrinth um, physically to walk it, I know in Get Quiet, there's a diagram and finger walking is very effective as well. Because okay. it's just that the brain and the finger can actually um, trace the labyrinth and it you can shift energetically just by doing that as like, well. Like, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Taking one finger and tracing it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And so I will take people out in quiet. They'll go from a busy road. All of a sudden they go back into this property, back into the desert in Scottsdale, Arizona. They'll be able to hear the birds chirping for the first time. They'll be able to hear the, the gravel crunching under their feet. We, we are missing being able to feel ourselves again. Mm -hmm. This is how we heal mind, body, and soul. And so I take them out. And the very first thing we do is we walk the labyrinth. And 90% of all people will cry because the men don't usually cry. So that's yeah. the 10%. <laughs> but, but, but the 90% of all people will get to the center and they'll actually be teary and they'll come back out and they'll say, Oh my gosh, I, I, I heard something that was so profound and it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. And that's where we start. And so it's a full day retreat. Uh, and it's a one-on-one -on -one retreat. It's just for that one person to know their next step and where they are on the path. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. I think I need to come to the labyrinth. <laughs> Would love think, to have you. I think I need to visit it. So for all the listeners out there, could you please tell everyone where they could find you, how they can connect with you, and also uh, when and how they can get their hands on your new book? Yes. Well, they can find me at elaineglass.net. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and share your email. I send um, very inspirational Sunday morning emails every week. They can find the book at getquiet.com and receive two amazing bonuses. One will be the download of the first chapter, as well as a six minute guided meditation with me. Nice. And um, the book comes out April 30th. So I really hope that you will enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure I will enjoy it. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast, sharing your story and all of your knowledge. I think it's a beautiful thing, what you're doing, what you're sharing with the world. And I think everybody that uh, you touched their lives are very lucky that you went on the path that you did and that you found your way. So thank you again for coming on. Thank you so much for having me.